In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this fondant name plaque. Hola, it's Carolina. <laughs> if you like to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. And let me stop fronting like I speak a lot of Spanish. <laughs> I took it in high school in escuela, and I remember poquito espanol. And um, I can, all my friends speak it, and I can kind of understand it, but that's the extent of the espanol that you're gonna get on this channel. <laughs> so, lo siento. Um, I wish I hablod Espanol a little more, mas? I don't know, I'm gonna stop. Anyway, so this week I am working on a cake that I'm doing a name plaque. And I'm, I'm filming it this time because last time I posted a picture of this cake and everybody, everybody, a lot of people <laughs> asked me how to make the name plaque in the middle. So this kind of technique has been pretty popular recently with sweet stamps, is that, wait, they're called sweet stamps, right? They are called sweet stamps. <laughs> However, I've had a couple of people say that they find that these are a little pricey and I do love these, but I wanna show you a technique on how to do it without using the sweet stamps. Everything that I use in the video will be linked in the description below. So let's get into the video. All right, I have my cake here in the refrigerator and I'm going to put the name on this here, right here. So I have a ruler and I want to measure how big this space is. So I want it to go from here to here. So that is about four and three quarter inches. And I don't want it to be more than three inches tall, the oval that I'm going to make. So four and three quarter inches by three inches tall. I want to print out everything that I'm going to need. First, I want an oval. So you could just Google the word oval and then go to images and just find an oval that you want to do. If you don't want to do an oval, then you can Google something like plaque templates. And then all of these shapes come up as well. I think I'll do one of these. So I'll check, I'll choose this one. And over here, I'm just going to right click and copy image and go to, this is Microsoft Word. I have a PC and not a Mac. If you have a Mac, you're going to use totally different programs and not sure how to use a Mac. I'm in Microsoft Word. This program came with my computer. Um, if you don't have it, you would have to buy it online. And I'm in a blank document and hit right click and then paste. Good. And now I want the words King Julian on here. And actually, I'm going to click this and hit return a couple times to bring it down so my cursor can be closer to these rulers. So I'm just gonna type out the words King and then underneath it, Julian. And I wanna make it the correct size. So I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna go up here to the font size, maybe do 75 to start and let's see. Okay, now I want a script. All right, I think I like this script. It's called Bird Love. I'll link it in the description below. And let's make it a little bigger. All right, so now I want to make this four and three quarter inches wide and three inches tall. So I'm going to, I'm just holding down my left um, mouse button <laughs> and dragging this until I get it as wide as I want it to be. That is a good width, and I just want to make sure the height is good, so I'm going to the rulers over here for one, two, three inches tall. And if I want to make it a little shorter, I can make it, you know, drag it up and down. Or you could make it wider by dragging it out, right? So you just have to make it the size that you want it to be. And now, this is where it can get a little tricky. I want to center this, so I'm just going to highlight the whole thing by holding down the shift button and clicking. And then I wanna go up here to center it. Down here I can move this to the middle and I, I do it by visualizing, you know, I can see that this King Julian is going to fit in here. If you want to, you can print it out and see, but I can actually make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna just highlight this and make it, let's try 100. It's just under three inches tall this should fit in here. So let me print this out and we will see. So I'm gonna to go to file print. 
And this is actually the size of a sheet of paper on here. So I could just take this and it just fits. So I'm going to bring the King and the Julian a little closer together when I make it and I will show you what I'm gonna do. But this is the perfect size. And again, if you wanna use an oval, do an oval, you know, whatever shape that you wanna do. I have fondant here. I'm gonna do royal blue on a gold background. All right, so I have gold. I just use regular gold coloring, um, not yellow. Yellow is gonna be too bright. I will link that coloring in the description below. And I rolled it out pretty thin. Um, it's not super, super thin, but it's thin. And then I have a royal blue and it's a little thicker than the gold. This is the color I'm gonna put the lettering in and you wanna make sure that it's a little thick so you can get some depth to your letters without going through the back of the fondant. What I did, this is marshmallow fondant. I have a video on how I make this fondant. I will link it below. I always mix a little bit of Tylose powder. This is CMC powder, it's gum text. It's the same thing. It's gonna stiffen your fondant and make it a lot easier to work with. I'm telling you, if you do not add this to your fondant, this is gonna be a nightmare. It's not gonna work. Your fondant is not gonna be stiff enough. A little bit goes a long way with this. What I did, I sprinkled a little bit on, knead it into the fondant, roll it out, let it sit. It, this has been sitting for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes right now. So it's holding its shape. It's still a little soft, so I'm gonna be able to get lettering in here. And the same with this one. Like, it's not, when I hold it, it's not falling apart. It's, it's keeping its shape. I have a cutting board. This cutting board is on a piece of non-skid pad. If I put it on the non-skid pad, it's not gonna move around as I'm cutting. It's happened to me so many times and it's so annoying. I have a Dresden tool. This tool, you're gonna need this to do this. Um, I will find there, I don't know if I could find this exact one. It's hard to find, but I will find a similar one and link it below. One end is um, a little flatter, the other end is a little pointier, and they both curve, so it's easy to trace things. Um, it's just my favorite tool. And I have an X-Acto knife, and I always have a needle tool available because these are just the three tools I use all the time. In the corner, I have a, a folded up piece of wet paper towel that I'm gonna keep wiping my X-Acto blade on because the fondant is gonna start to stick to this and I wanna be able to clean the blade. To start, I'm gonna put this on top of this fondant. This is the, the fondant that's getting the lettering. And I'm just going to do an outline of this plaque. So, <laughs> I've said this so many times, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but I have to say it in case this is the first time someone's watching my videos. You want to good, put good pressure down so you are transferring the line onto the fondant. If you press too hard, you're gonna poke a hole. And if you poke a hole, it's so hard to cut it out. It's just so annoying. So just make sure you're pressing hard enough to transfer the line, but not too hard. Before you finish, keep your hand down. Don't just lift the paper, peel it back. Make sure you can see the line. If there's a part where you can't see it and you wanna make it a little deeper, then you can just lay the paper back down and deepen that line. If you just lift the paper up and then you're like, crap, I need to trace again, it's hard to put it back where it was to retrace. So always peel it back, make sure you can see the line. And now I have to turn this towards me a little bit. I'm working over to the right. So I wanna make sure that I can see this. So this will, I trimmed this down to right around the edges uh, so I could see if, if it's center. If I had this on a whole sheet of paper, it would be blocking this outline. I really wouldn't be able to see it actually trim it just a little more. I said I wanted to move the words a little closer together um, because it, I feel like they're just a little too far apart right here. So I'm going to start with Julian. I'm going to put him where I want him to be. And if I put him here, the king is hanging off the top a little bit. So I'm going to have to pull that down to trace the king. Making sure it's even. Good. Now I'm just going to trace Julian. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm sorry I had to turn it so I could see it but I'm pressing down. I'm using the curve part. I'm not using the point. I'm just using the curve to gently make an impression in this fondant. Lift it up, see if it transferred. And I, I can't really see it, so I'm gonna try to make it a little deeper. 
Okay, that's better. And now I want to hold the paper where it is and just slide this down just a little bit and then lift it up and see where it is in relation to the top. I can actually slide it down just a little bit more and do the same thing. I'm going to trace the lettering. So press hard enough and if you need to just go back over it like I did before and lift it up. Perfect. I have the outline of the lettering and I want to make it deeper. So I'm going to use this Dresden tool to deepen the lines using the lines that I um, just put in there as a guide. And right now I'm using a light touch. I'm not just pushing it all the way down. It's going to mess it up. So I'm lightly going over the lines that I just made. And I'm starting to just create a cavity that I can paint with the gold. And I like to keep the picture here for a reference. Um, that way I can still see what the lettering looks like even if I can't see the lines. And that's the basic outline. And now I just want to widen it a little bit, maybe make it a little bit deeper. So it's not gonna be as deep as this because look, you can see the back through it. But just again, using a light touch and just trying to um, make the letters a little more prominent. And to make the dots over the eyes a little more prominent, I have this tiny little ball tool. I can link this below. And I'm not just going to stick it in there. You got to just um, be gentle with it like I was earlier. And just I'm turning it and just trying to make a little impression. All right, now I want to paint gold. I've been using this plate all week for my cakes, so I just want to keep using the gold that's on here, and I can add a little more. This is Rollcomb Super Gold. I get it at SugarDelights.com. I will find this and link this below. This is a really big bottle of it because I use so much, um, just, so just pay attention to the size when you order it. And I'm going to just tap a little bit on the lid to get some out. And I can still use the rest of this gold that's still on this plate. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of lemon extract. The lemon extract evaporates so fast. It's just so much easier to work with lemon extract. Um, you can also use Everclear uh, alcohol or vodka. Um, I just prefer to use lemon extract. So I'm going to just add a little bit and start to mix it around. I'm going to use the lemon extract to get the extra gold off the sides as well. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm a broken record because I always say this. When you're using this Rollcom Super Gold, you have to find a happy medium. If you make it too thin, just wait a minute and let the alcohol evaporate and then it'll be thicker and the color will transfer. If it's too thick, add a little bit more uh, alcohol or um, extract and thin it out. I have this tiny, tiny, tiny little paintbrush. You need it to be really small like this. I could try to find something similar and link it below. And the gold transfers onto your finger, so you have to be very careful. I want to get a little bit of the gold on here, so I'm just turning it in my fingers because I want to keep the point. If I, if I push it down, it's going to broaden the brush, and I don't want that. I want to keep it really thin and just start to paint the letters in. I have to turn this towards me. <laughs> I try to do it for the camera, but it doesn't work. So you see how if I hold it down, it kind of um, fills the cavity. As I hold it down, it spreads out a little bit and fills it up. And I'm just gonna keep going back, rolling it in, in the paint and just painting the entire thing. I'm gonna keep turning it because I find it's a little easier to paint, you know, from certain angles. So when you're going around curves, it can get a little tricky. And I have not had any caffeine. <laughs> you don't want your hands to shake for this. I'm pushing it down and then lifting it up through the cavity. 
So you have to have a very steady hand when you're doing this. Um, and you want to stay on the inside because if it gets on the outside of the lettering, then it's going to be messed up. I mean, we might be able to clean that up with some alcohol, but still. This is starting to dry out a little bit, so I just need to add another little bit of lemon extract. You can see if it has too much extract, the gold doesn't transfer as much. So I'm gonna try to go to like a drier area <laughs> and pick up some more gold. If you just, like I said before, if you find that it's too thin, just wait a minute and it will, it will thicken up and the uh, alcohol will evaporate. Now I just want to go back and refine any edges that I think look a little jagged. I'm just trying to fill in any places that looks like it needs a little more gold. Let's carefully cut this out. So I have my X-Acto knife and just putting this down to the board and just start to cut it out. I find it easier to cut from this part out to the points. Now, anytime I cut anything out of the fondant, I like to smooth the edges. So be careful not to touch the gold. You don't want it to transfer anywhere else. So I'm just taking my fingers, or you can get your Dresden tool to get in these little corners. And what I'm doing, I'm just pushing the fondant back down on itself, because when you cut, you get jagged edges and it's just not pretty and clean. So just take the time to smooth out your cuts and make your, your pieces look so much neater and cleaner. All right, now I just want to paint this background gold. Add a little bit more lemon extract and just use the gold that's on here to paint. So I'm just using my brush to pick up the gold that's all over. I should really do this on something else other than a plate. <laughs> and I'm just gonna paint that area where it's gonna sit. You could paint the entire thing if you're not sure. And if you want to, you can let that dry for a minute and do another coat if you want to get the, the color a little deeper. Everything smells like lemon. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm going to take this. I have a little bit of water and a paintbrush. Carefully flip this over. And I'm just going to paint the back. Don't put a lot of water on the back. You just need enough to make it stick. You don't want the water to seep out underneath this blue piece and get onto the gold. Making sure you get to the edges. I'm putting it down and then letting the edges gently lay down so I don't get um, any air bubbles underneath. Good, now look, some of the gold transferred. I have just regular vodka here and a paper towel get a little bit of vodka on the paper towel. And basically I'm going to use the vodka to erase the gold that transferred. Vodka takes a little longer to evaporate. It may look a little wet for a couple minutes until it completely evaporates. All right, and again, I have my X-Acto knife and I wanna cut out a border. So what I wanna do is get close and I want to have an even border the whole way around. So you have to make sure that it's not so thin on one side and so thick on the other, right? And I guess I want the border to be that thick and then just cut an even border. And again, I'm gonna really try to make sure I don't transfer any gold onto this blue again. <laughs> Smooth out the edges. And now for the last part, the very tops are not gold. The edges are not gold. So I'm just gonna go back here to my trusty gold plate and just paint these edges. This is not good for the camera. Oh man, I just got some gold there. <laughs> I'm painting the edges so everything is gold. I did that enough for the camera. I'm gonna put it down <laughs> and finish. Just by doing it this way, it's gonna be a lot easier. 
And let me erase this gold. And here's a little tip. I have some cornstarch here and a little bit, get some of that off my finger. Just use a little teeny bit, like not all of this. Just get a tiny, tiny bit of cornstarch on your finger and you can buff that on top of the, um, the vodka marks if they're not evaporating and kind of buff those marks out. But you don't want to use too much because if you put too much cornstarch on here, it's going to start to look white like this, right? So you need to buff it in. I'm using a very gentle touch, I'm not even pressing down hard. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of these marks. And here's your name plaque. If you are not ready to put it on the cake, what I'm going to do, this is going on a 10 inch tier. So I have a 10 inch cake dummy. I put some push pins in the bottom so it's not going to roll around and then put this on top so it can conform to the shape of the cake before I put it on the cake. So there you go. How adorable is that? And I love the way that it turned out. Um, it, it is a little time consuming to trace all the lettering in there and paint it, but it looks so cool and you don't have to use the sweet stamps. So I will put the final product over here. This is a giant, as my boyfriend would say, gigantic. <laughs> I've said this before in other videos. He has a British accent and he always says it's gigantic. This is a gigantic cake and I'm glad that I lift weights because it's going to be very difficult for me to lift and deliver, <laughs> but it is a six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch cake and feeds over a hundred people. And it's for a first birthday, first birthday cake <laughs> party. <laughs> so anyway, I stuck the plaque to that cake, to that tier with a little bit of buttercream icing on the back. I just like using icing to stick things to icing. I just feels like, I just feels like, <laughs> I feel like once I put it back in the refrigerator, the icing behind it really solidifies and it holds it on there really well. However, you can use piping gel or water or whatever else that you would like. And I have to say that that design on this cake, that is not my original design. It's based off a picture that I was given and there, uh, was there a watermark on it? I don't know if there was, but if there was a watermark, I will put the uh, original designer below. So I can't take credit for that whole design. So I think that's it. <laughs> if you guys have any preguntas <laughs> or comments, wait, pregunta, is that, that's question, right? <laughs> Leave it in the description, not in the description. I'm losing my mind in the comments below. And if you want to, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Insta, Facebook, and I got my website. Everything is listed in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and remember it's cake. Have fun. <laughs> I will see you on the next one. Bye.